Welcome everyone. We are back. GG Millions. It is season 2024, episode 42. And we got a very special guest as always, but a little different because this is a world champion of the online, the WSOP main event in 2020. I'm going to let him pronounce his last name. I'm going to intro him as Stoyan. Stoyan, how are you? Hey man, thanks for having me. I'm feeling great. I, I love it. Can you pronounce your last name for us just so we can, I don't want to, I don't want to mess that up. Yeah, like the Bulgarians pronounced it Madan Zhev, but I guess this is really hard. So Madan Zhev is, is fine. Like, yeah. Beautiful. Well, listen, with that said, I do want to clarify something. You did win this event just the other week, GG Millions, I believe two weeks ago. You took it down and I did not have the right info. I wasn't aware. It didn't register. You were like S dot. The last name was hard and I, I totally was overlooked that you did win this the champion of such a large score, the largest in the online history at the time in 2020 and of course on GG. So again, congrats to you. And there it is. You can see with recorded earnings, just about 5 million there. Just super, super experienced. You did win this, uh, the GG millions just two weeks ago. So congrats on that. And today, very, very strong final table. Some players you recognize, some players that are world-class household names, also some unknowns. We're going to take a look at that and see what we're playing for today as it's 1.37 million in the prize pool. Again, from Sunday, we play to a final table, pick up the action every Tuesday at 145 Eastern. And there are the payouts, almost 300,000 to, to first. I know you've been playing poker a long time. It's always exciting when there's big purses online. This is uh, crazy. I think there's $10,000 buy-ins every week of, you know, this This wasn't the case back in online poker long, not too long ago. So 9 to 137 remain. Payouts are big. ICM, of course, something to discuss. We're going to pick your brain on a lot of the topics. And what about some of these names? Any players here you're familiar with stand out for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I played with some, like, uh, I can recognize uh, Guat Darie, of course. Um, the Ukrainian guy um, also seems to be like pretty regular at these tournaments. Uh, I believe he's playing much more than me, actually. Uh, I can I can recognize him, and uh, yeah, there are some interesting players today. Yeah, for sure. Bruno Volkman, someone who's won twice, one of the strongest Brazilian players, and you mentioned. Uh, oh, yeah, Michael for sure. Bruno. Datani, I believe you said won the PCA, right? He won the, the in Bahamas. He won or an event, a major event there. So very experienced. He's on the short stack, still 20 lines. And of course, Pavel Luzov, who has nine final tables so far in the season, the current season. You so know, pretty... an interesting fact about Pavel? What's he that? He won the million maker in the, in the summer. The, yes, the <laughs> I, that's true. I know he has some great results live. I see him frequently deep in main events and definitely one of the more talented players. AD, also someone you mentioned from Ukraine. I don't want to pronounce that last name, but another very talented player seems very frequently in the mix. So we're going to take a look here. You, you good for a dinner? We'll do a wager, red or black. We, we picked the uh Let's do that. Let's do that. I'll enjoy having dinner from you. All right. Well, I'll, I'll let you pick red or black. I'll, let, I'll pick black. Black flop, you got. All right, audience, we're going to have 50 or or $100 giveaway based on who does take down the tournament. If it's one of Stoyan's players or one of my players. So we'll we'll get that draft going. It is a it is a black flop. So you get to choose first or second and third. And then we go 1-1-1 one, one, one the whole way. So you can choose first pick or second and third picks. Mm, I'll go with first. I'll just pick Kilia. It seems that uh, he's having a decent chip lead across the, the, the table so far. So I'll go with him for first pick. Okay, I like it. I will take A, D, and Vlad. I'm just a sucker for chips. So both players pretty strong. Also, Brazil, two players and two Austrians back to the old ways on the GG Millions. I feel like that is 
a very frequent uh, occurrence where there's uh, Austrian and Brazilian players, two of the stronger countries, as we see Pavel pick up that pot. So now it is your pick, and we'll alternate all the way down now. Yeah, I mean, Pavel seems to be in a great run, like winning the million maker in the summer and second in the double pt in the on the same bar or in the 10k so i just picked pavel i think he's you know very decent run and motivated for yeah that, that seems like a great pick i will happily get bruno bruno to round out next pick as we see the ace jack put pressure on ace queen suited here let's see how that plays out and then you get let's see how many left we got michael we got daniel and we have the two C3H players. So there's three left. You, your choice. Yeah, I'll pick Michael. Michael Dutani is someone who I met uh, recently in Paris. We played some events together. He seems to be a really nice, humble guy. And of course, he won the PCA last year, the main event. So um, I believe he can turn around this stack and make it to the later stages well that that seems like a great pick and we have a tough decision here for our austrian friend i mean this what do you like here if you're in this spot this is nine handed middle position you get three bet and this is a tricky one yeah like i mean yeah cost seems to be reasonable and uh ace queen has a great playability post swap also, it will be a hit of a lot of the bluffs in Andre's range. So I guess I like the call, yeah. Well, he does call, and he does get a very nice flop with the ace-8-5 rainbow. He is in the lead. Of course, he got to be worried about ace-king. Uh, also, ace is somehow that would be hard since an ace flops. But certainly, he will be continuing. Yeah, certainly. I, I was not expecting the race, to be honest, because... Um, Andre is definitely having the range advantage on this board and he can battle a lot of turns and um, I mean he can just fold his bluffs at this point but luckily for um, the Austrian guy he, he has the ace so what a spot huh? Let's finish our draft here as well as he secures the hand right now. Pretty pretty impossible that he would be folding now. Stack pot ratio low. He has top two pair, and he is looking good. It is, I believe, your... Did you just take Datani? Yeah, I, I picked Michael Datani. Datani, so I will... Uh, let's see. see uh, basically... So it's either Daniel... He seems... Daniel Peterson is... Let's see. I will go with, uh, wow, good fold there from AD. I will take Daniel Peterson. Okay, so I'm left with... Uh, 23 Rudy or C3H? With Rudy. Okay, let's go Rudy. You have got Rudy. And usually there's like a very short stack, but today there's not. A C3H, since we each have four... I'll call that a uh, hundred. We'll just put that in the hundred pocket and not count yeah, the dinner bet. This seems to be like some chemical formula. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is the formula for nitroglycerin. I mean, oh, wow. this guy, it seems to be good in chemics. So smart guy. All right. Um, yeah, he looks like he knows. You know, I'm, yeah. we're gonna leave him as a as a wash between me and you, but we'll count that for a hundred dollar for the audience so good luck audience if one of stoyan players win you get 50 gg ticket if one of my players wins 100 i also will have a tweet out which i'll put the link in on jeff Gross poker on my twitter which you have a chance for a 50 dollars cash giveaway so good luck to all of you and we appreciate you let us know where you're watching from as well as hit that thumbs up we do appreciate it and that'll be part of the giveaway keyword at the end of the stream so so far some some exciting poker and really interesting today no one very short right last couple of last final table i know we had like four really short stacks and it adds a different dynamic here it's much closer there's not really a runaway stack 3.3 million for for Ilya, but other than that like everyone's pretty even today so we'll see how that plays out as king queen goes ahead and bets as 23 rudy has over to the king a gut shot in the backdoor spade draw which comes in this could be a pretty interesting card yeah i think 
it will just go bad and probably a call from Rudy, like drawing for all the stuff. Okay, check back. I don't really like it, but yes, he thinks it's hard to get three streets or something. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I just generally perceive the small blind as like a, a pocket pair or suited Broadway sort of hand. That's generally what I, I, I think. So I think part of AD is pot control also doesn't want to get, you know, where he's against sevens or I don't know, King Jack suited or something that he just feels like he could get in trouble. I, I agree. I think I would normally see a bet, but now maybe just figures it's a two street hand on certain rivers and is going to go for a, a bet here. He does go for a larger bet. Yeah. And we're going to see this pot going into Andrew's way. Yep, it does pick it up. So a little pot control there. Maybe missed a bet, arguable, but he is up to 1.8 million, sitting in very good position. A tough seat for Pavel. He's got the chip leader on his direct left, although, you know, he's yeah, someone who's true. just really comfortable with playing and, and knows how to maneuver. So he is going to open, of course, king-queen off here. As you mentioned, the, the, the players are pretty deep yet, so they'll have enough time to get to know each other, like, you have the dynamics at the table. So I, I think this will play a role. Kind of standard strip bet from Michael Dutani, one of the best combos you can pick for bluffing, like strip betting. And it's gonna work for him. Very nice. A little bit of respect there. I mean, Pavel, maybe an optional four bet hand. The stack size is one of the shorter stacks. Do you, what, what is in, in Pavel's position there? What are your determining factors if he should four bet? You know, that hand doesn't necessarily play well the call, right? Out of position and in, in, in the stacks, the stack sizes, he's the, the odds, implied odds. But what, what would you consider if you're going to four bet the king queen off versus just fold? I mean, king queen off is like. Um... Hard hand to play post flop because whatever you flop, you you are like in a no man's land on the later streets. I mean, if Michael just goes for barreling turn and river, your top pair is gonna be bluff catchers on many of the runouts, um, and uh, there are a lot of people who can bust before him. So probably he just don't, don't wanna get into these situations so early. Um, I think the fault is standard. Michael's range is pretty polarized. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a GTO fault. Yeah. Interesting to see Ilya uh, betting out of position here. He has a nice combo to do this because um, with this, he can play very polarizing on turns and, and rivers um, when he's catching the additional equity on clubs or 10. And um, if he gets somehow raised, uh, he's not going to sacrifice so much equity, if that makes sense. Yeah, pretty nice card for Vlad here. I mean, he has a 10. He also does pair now, beats hands such as value hands, ace, king, or, you know, eight. So he... Gets a, a pretty nice nice turn, and he decides to bet here, although he yeah. may just have enough showdown. What do you think about betting versus checking there? Yeah, I was expecting to see a check, but uh, he decided just to go and turn his hand into a bluff, I believe. This is his idea. Um, maybe he thinks that Tilia is not going to protect his checking range, and he's going to generate a lot of fault equity. I think both options are fine. Most people will go with the check though. So we got we, we need to have in mind that our boy Vlad is um, someone who we can see aggression, showing aggression and spicy plays. Yeah, I mean definitely Ilya looks like he's gonna be playing some some poker today. He's uh does fold the six ten off though, respects that early position sort of short stack raise. Uh, definitely the big blind strategy, very interesting to see players, how wide they defend and from what spots. And he does pass up there. We do have the tweet out now. That is on Jeff Gross Poker. I will get you 
a link and drop it in. Again, appreciate everyone watching. That's a $50 giveaway. So good luck to you guys there. And Stoyan also has Twitter. Where are you most active on social media, Stoyan? Do you, you, you use Instagram some or mostly Twitter? Yeah, I mean, I just started to be active in Twitter. Um, yeah, um, so I'm going to be more active, I guess, in the future in Twitter streets. And um, sometimes I post some stories in my Instagram and I share some experiences from my poker journey and sometimes something I like going to, to the nature and uh, I post a really nice photos from my trips too. Very nice. Well, yeah, I do follow you and I, I recommend others to do so and keep up with your poker journeys. I know you're just in, I believe you said EPT Paris, you've been traveling around and you are, are you going to hit any of the, the Triton stops this year? Yeah, I think I'll show up. I'll show up there. I did one stop last year and I really enjoyed it. I think Triton is doing great job. Like, um, that's how poker should be, like in our age. Um, they have a really nice app. It's, it kind of brings the feeling of playing online, but you have all the life aspects uh, at the same time. So I really enjoyed Triton. Everything is so professional there. And of course, it's a very high competition, like playing against the, the best players. Um, I feel good in those fields, so I want to compete and see. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's probably the the quality of player, I would say, in terms of skill level. Like the GG Million may be even tougher than a lot of those 25 or so 50K events at Triton. I mean, like the players, I feel like, are very tough in the, the GG Millions. I mean, there's some satellite winners, of course, but the level here is very strong. So I'm sure you feel comfortable playing with uh, with everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like, it seems to be like the next step to do. Yeah, these these guys. I mean, I, I I'm impressed every week. I enjoy doing the show. I really do enjoy watching the players play here, and they're they're just so many talented, so many great folds, so many great plays, so many interesting bet sizings, and a lot to take away here. I, I do warn the viewers always: be careful if you're playing like a fifty dollar. You're gonna see a three bet here. What do you think? Or he will just? I mean, all the options here seems to be fine. I like to see a three bet here from uh, this guy. Uh, I just. Checked. Uh, this is Stefan Wiener, uh, who is a very successful player. Also, one million in life earnings. He just decides to fold. I don't hate it. Still, there is. Still, we're in the beginning of the tournament. Maybe he wants to see what's going to happen. Yeah, they're, 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 those are huge. Those are huge swings, right? To get the to get the raise take it down also a little momentum right you, you show your opponent that hey i'm i'm you know obviously they don't know what you have in the second but if you show sort of that 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 willingness to to put pressure on it's not just a free button open and take down or defend you know i think there is some definitely some uh gamesmanship to all that so uh, interesting though he was he could see he was thinking about it he was on the fence on what to do there but you can see a little bit of a, a look at his strategy not to call right it's either folder or or Three bet, and that yeah, is definitely handy. Good three play. options were possible. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely wasn't sure what was going to happen there. And again, the very tough lineup here today. So not much to give. A lot of, lot of highly talented players. We're still nine handed. No super short stacks. You can see the short stack still has twenty big blinds right now. A little over, right? Twenty two with Daniel. So a lot of, lot of play here today. Wide open. Appreciate you guys watching. Again, you can go to Jeff Gross Poker on Twitter and hit the retweet button. There is a $50 giveaway. We invite you to do that. And we will have later in the show, we will have more uh, giveaway opportunities. So thank you all for being here. And Stoyan, are you going to the main event at the WSOP this year in Vegas? Will you come for the whole summer? What's your plans for that? Yeah, well, my first WSOP main event appearance was in 2022 because uh, I got my visa a little bit later and I was not able to travel to the US, but now I'm good. Um, I haven't missed a WSOP main since then. I like to go for like the second part of the series, if we can call it, call it like this. 
Uh, two months of constant grind is just like um, I start to not feel good. I mean, I, I still have the motivation and everything to grind, but I want to be in. I, I'm like this that uh, when I play, I, I feel like I want to be in my best shape, and I don't want to make to compromise that. So. I feel much better when I play just the second half. And uh, of course, I can play some stuff online in the beginning of the series when all the regs, all the regulars are in Vegas. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, for this year, I still haven't made my plan. Maybe I'll do the same, but I, I haven't planned yet yeah, how to do it. Are you playing some double SOP events too? Uh yeah, I play, so I just went to the Bahamas one. I played the main, the 25K, and the uh, PLO, 10K. I, I like PLO a lot, so I played played those. Actually, I, I, it was good. I had a good series there, cashed everything but the main. I think I played like five sort of side those side events. Um, that was nice. And the main event last year at the WSOP, I got 200 and something, so a good oh, run, nice. like pretty good deep run. And I went for just, uh, I think I went for like 10 days or something. I played a, a couple oh. events, so... Yeah, it was. I had a. I had a baby. I got a ten month old right now. Boy, another one. So I had two boys. So a little less poker. Yeah, thank you. It's fun, but it's you know a little less time to just go around and do some of these stops. And I love poker so much, but yeah, just sort of at that period of life where it's. I love doing this show weekly, the podcast, but you know, traveling and playing is not the, uh, I think, the priority I think right now. That's great because it gives you uh, some balance, and uh, it's not like you get lost into the poker grind and lose yourself there, like. Uh, you can get to the family and uh, like recharge, and that's that's like sounds like a very balanced approach. It's nice. It's nice. I will say though, I'm you know I'm 37 and I love poker. I do. I, I, I that's why I tell people out there if you're if you're young, single, no kids, you know enjoy it. Enjoy that time of bouncing around to events or you know going to places and playing and just picking up on a whim and going because it it's you know it is different. You get more responsibilities, more stuff and again it's all different right different pockets good better worse whatever it's all just different and great so you got to enjoy the uh the cycles enjoy the the, the periods of time don't take it for granted you know when you're playing and, and getting it's to go interesting into how we grew up with this um how we grew up with the game like uh i, I remember when um nice, nice run out for Ilya. by the way uh, seems like he's gonna take this hint and some good good pot um but i remember how we grew up with the game and uh, everybody was uh, like single going to parties and clubs and, uh, and then uh, some people got their girlfriends they started to go less to parties and now i see more and more of my friends having kids and still going on the tours and but but they're different so it's now how it's, it's interesting for me this for how sure yeah it changes it. fast you got your wingman or someone you travel and go hang out with on tournaments and the next thing you know they got a girlfriend or a kid and, and you're solo it's it's just how it goes but this is actually a very interesting call with the king 10 i like it he doesn't have a club in his hand he doesn't have i mean i guess he does have a king so he blocks the king jack draw but i don't know i mean you, you could see he's gonna he's curious here he didn't believe him on the turn clubs miss he's on the button as well right Ilya's on the button Gonna have a little wider range, so this is uh this is actually could be problematic for Michael here. Hmm. Yeah. You think? I mean, he's ta he's tanking. He's very curious. King 10 suited the taxi cab from, if any, Houston out there in the audience. Actually, I think King 10 unsuited, but the King 10 is a taxi. And this is one of the reasons you can get put in a cab, you know, instead of, uh, instead of, he does make the fold. He was, he, he was curious. That was a very curious, very curious. Let's see if I have my Discord sounds making noise there. I apologize. I'm not sure if it's me. I think it's my Discord. Noise popping up. Yeah. Well, guys. Ilya, going to work here, and if you are Daniel, you are the shortest stack. Now the blinds are up to 2040, so you're in that like 16, 17 blind territory. It feels like a pretty good candidate to shove, right? You got the wide open from the chip leader. 
You're only two players left behind. You have ace-10, and the small three bet is becoming such a thing in poker right now. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that, Stoyan, how that sort of shifted? Mm. I think something, uh, my, my, my table freezed, so I didn't see the last hand. Yeah. Well, that was, uh, we will get that situated for you as we pick up the action here, folding to the button, ace nine. Going to be playing, curious what he does. 20 blind stack, has the best hand. He's in the folded and in position, does go for the min raise. Okay, I'll just take a bathroom break and try to... Yeah, maybe pop off, pop off and then back on. Maybe if you close out and they'll let you back in, that might be, that maybe it'll, I'm not sure. Okay. Sounds cool. We'll see Stoyan in a second as we pick up the flop, ace nine, queen deuce of hearts. Queen deuce of hearts has all the pair outs plus the heart. He doesn't know if the, all the pair outs are good. Can assume the second up flush draw, likely good. Certainly continuing. Let's see if a check raise in order. Just call makes sense. So no over to the king high there. So if he is against top pair, you know, he just has a pure flush draw most of the time. Let's see what he goes with. Does go with the call. Five pairs on the board. 373 in the middle. Vlad is still in now the first to act. He will check it over. Michael with the best hand, but a little bit. Again, you get called. You know, you're beating some draws. Five pairs the board. See if he keeps the lead in the hand or does he pot control check. Risky. Risky all around. Either way, it sucks to bet. It gets smashed on. If you check, you give up with the lead in the hand. You might get bluffed or let your opponent get there. And he is going to keep 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 the pressure on. So board pairs, queen high flush draw, one less card to come. A little less attractive, but it's still a lot of equity against a lot of hands, including some hands like this where there's no pair yet and a flush draw. So Vlad debating what to do here. And just, just folds the queen deuce of hearts there. I don't know if you got your table back up, Stoyan. A little surprised yeah, on that. Hmm. What do you think there? Did you get to see that one, or is the table not back up? I was just back on the river. So what won the hands? Uh, it was ace-nine off, bet on the turn. It was, uh, I believe, king-ten, king-ten... Five, two hearts, queen two, queen deuce of hearts, flatted in the big blind, defended, right or defended open from the button, and then check called, check folded when the five paired on the turn. So queen high flush draw, folded to ace nine, won the button. Well, there's me. not right. much shift in the stack so far. Like everybody seems to be like uh, waiting. You know, in a waiting mode and not much maneuvers so far. Maybe Vlad is trying to show up some aggression and um, like chip up. Yeah, it's been, I'd say, a pretty uneventful in the sense. We really haven't seen all ins. We've seen maybe the ace jack, ace queen. We got to see a bit of a battle and then nothing too crazy. And then it's really been. Again, no one really yeah. super short right now. Nice turn for Vlad. Yeah, Vlad Vlad has a lock on the hand. Ace eight suited. Definitely, again, fairly high up in the range, button versus big blind defending. And he did have the best hand, and now he has got zero percent equity. And this may shake him. These are hard, right? It's so hard to make a pair and hold them. So you just when you get spots like this, there's draws, the button range is wide, you don't have a diamond, you have ace high. You can definitely get talked Especially into Especially when you are showing aggression and um this this spots can you you can get paid very well, like people expect you to be moving a lot and you just hear it now. 
Again, good, good, good decision making. AD got rid of the ace jack when was was dead to the ace queen. Gets rid of there with ace eight would have been dead to the the turn trips and and showing good discipline and good decision making with his mm. experience. We see that AD is one of the more experienced players here. Yeah, sure. And actually, in terms of winners, Bruno Volkman has won twice. Pavel has won twice. GG Millions, and I don't. Uh believe anyone else or maybe bruno i don't has. know if it's just my impression but but ag seems to be very regular on these final tables for sure it's not his first one but it seems that he, he just can't walk it and he is always busting like early and let's see if he's gonna do deeper this time yeah, he's on fire this year. He's got six final tables in season 2024 alone. We'll call it the episode 42. So 42, I mean, it's that's that's a, that's a large amount, right? He's played I'm sure. see, six final tables out of in 16 caches and 41 appearance. So pretty consistent. Yeah, kind of fast check from Stefan, the Austrian guy. <clears throat> Let's see if this is gonna give some incentive to Bruno to value bet. He does it. I mean, his hand is good enough anyway. So, value bet. Yeah, really, so far, people have been spot on decision making. Ilya, your chip leader start is still that, and he is up to 4 million. Let's see if he goes as wide as A6 off. I mean, oh, really? It's wide. It's wide. It is chip lead, but nine handed under the gun. You look around. No one has anything that exciting. Deuces for Vlad. A lot of players behind. Going set mining here against the chip leader. A deep stack. He's the big yeah, I'm but... surprised to see this so fun. I don't like it so much. And I don't expect I didn't expect Vlad to to go with his deuces, but it's, it can't be too bad, right? Um set mining. But uh, really, it was open from Ilya. Like maybe his his game plan is to go for total domination and give his uh, give himself the best chance to win this one. Uh, let's see how this is gonna work for him. He seems to be showing a good intuition, though he didn't see bad the flow. Like. Yeah, and Ilya actually, you know, on the A6 off, just decides not to take a shot there. I'm a little surprised, like, you know, you get some pairs to fold out. Maybe on that board, you have the gut shot, you block the straight. You're going to open that, and you get defended. I'm a little surprised, but I, I was surprised by the open in the first place. It's, it's one thing to be chip leader. Mm -hmm. I get it, open wide, but under the gun, nine-handed A6 off. You know, it's, it's hard to get great situations there. Yeah, but you know, like... When you're playing final table, sometimes you just start to get a feeling about the players because it's always a unique situation. Like many players will just not play GTO and for the strategies, they're going to deviate so much. And if you believe, you're, if you're confident in your uh, abilities to feel the players, you can really deviate and try to steal pots which you don't deserve. So I like people going out of line when they have a strong logic behind them. For sure. Well, this is going to be a cooler that is going to get to C5. Covered in spades, needs some hearts, straights, or a jack as he now is open-ended. So each player does not want their respective set as we go to a river. And it is a heart, and it is a eight. Oh my God. That is lightning in a bottle for my man. I chose him. Daniel going to take a, a pretty nasty beat to AD as 1.73, one, almost 1.75 in the pot. Huge pot, huge moment. We're still nine-handed. We are officially, what, 34, 35 minutes in, not lost a player, and that really does even things out, kind of swaps around where no one, again, super short. We got like 20 blind stacks or the short stacks. And plenty of plays. Ilya is going to try to get one through on the button. It won't work. Daniel's got ace king. I mean, kind of mm -hmm. interesting, though. Daniel is actually in third right now, right? Like, so it's sort of uh, one of those interesting spots where you're like, all right, I'm gonna, I could have blow up the pot. I'm out of position. If I get yeah, flat, yeah. they're getting a weird spot versus the chip leader. So he's actually 
Yeah. He's and debating on. Wow. Think the three bet is mandatory. I like this show, actually, to be honest. Like, I uh, think this guy maybe like did his homework and watched some Sims because I think this show is fine, even with 45 bigs or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it seems like a deep stack, but you don't really want to go post flop against the chief leader out of position with with Ace King, which is basically uh, like just you you you. But you you hope to hit a top pair, and uh, if you don't, you're pretty lost. Um, so showing is nice. It's gonna work like very very often. And uh, you block the aces and kings and um, the button range. And if you get caught by ace king or queens, it's just good for you. And uh, you can fold a lot of equity out of the button range. I mean, this yeah. is a good thing. Yeah, I, I kind of like it too. It might it might appear if it, he's scared. Oh, I just want to take it down. I don't want to play. But like, yeah, you make it. If, you know, four x. Or so out of the, out of position, you get flatted by queen jack suited or eights or nines, and now you're like post flop. The ICM is huge versus just taking it down and getting some decent hands to fold or even pairs, right? Some pairs that don't want to call you. So I I do think it's uh yeah I think it's a reasonable play as our friend two three Rudy has got eight nine board pairs does lose to tens plus now right not necessarily the best run out spades also come doesn't have a spade so this is an interesting one. His opponent happens to have a hand with showdown value, so he's going to go for a blocker bet, which actually may work out well for him. Hmm, for sure. He had less than the pot, and he saw the opportunity to bet a small size. Um, yeah, targeting exactly the hands, like the one Ilya has, King Kate. In a difficult situation, of course, you might just do it with some king six or like with big doors. Interesting fold there for that price. I mean, there are hands, you know, 5x or some hands maybe he beats at this. He just realizes on that run out flushes straights, uh, the, the, uh, too many things that just beat him. So he did make the correct fold. If he's wrong there, that's pretty brutal though, right? For that price and that mm -hmm. hand. So nice, again, nice decision. By Ilya showing class, showing that, hey, I'm willing to open a lot of hands, but I also am willing to make tricky folds and, and you know, not pay stuff off. So, again, showing showing very good understanding of where he's at and the ranges. Not limp from Michael from the bottom. Uh, he seems to have a limping strategy with this stack, which is interesting. Well, ace 10 on the king, jack, jack, nine, three off. Not going to be that interested here as Vlad. Again, two Austrian players, two Brazilians. That's what I'm more used to. There was, I think, 25 or 20 plus episodes where it was all, it was literally Brazilian and Austria was at every final table. So it's now back to a healthy representation today as Bruno, one of the more talented Brazilians in the world. King, queen suited, certainly going to be playing 30 blinds, going to open here. And yeah, Julia has a real hand. second in the Brazil all time winning list. So, also one of the players who are doing good and being hot. <clears throat> Interesting flop paired board. Um, Ilya with the tens, but he is to be worried about the big blind in a bunch of 9x. Um, I expect to see a small size just to fold the equity of one of the players and maybe be heads up on the turn and go from there. Yeah, 7 8 suited completing there i definitely have noticed a much tighter range of players completing out of the big on you know multi-way pots just to just so many it's so hard to be in good situations but a hand like seven eight suit has a lot of playability you know and he does actually get a piece of the board here and is pretty bad shape though as it stands versus the hand he's against 
Yeah. Jack is an interesting card because the big blind should have a lot of hands like Jack 10, Queen, Queen 10, and maybe 7, 10 sweet head or something. Um, at the same time, you have the blockers, so there is some merit to turning your hand into a block, but. Yeah, Ilya seems to be shifting gears in an interesting way. Sometimes we see him being very aggressive and sometimes choosing the passive lines. Um, I, I like the Ilya, obviously, the check back on the turn. I mean, he is going to have a, too much hand, I think, to fold. So he will call here with the straight. And yeah, I see what, what our friend was trying to do. And I, I like how Ilya played it. I really do. I mean, if he doesn't have a straight there, or an eye, it's pretty hard to call. So that is a good good result for Ilya. He is still your chip leader, four million, and now a couple short stacks. One in particular, C three H is on the much shorter stack, twelve lines. Yeah. Now we we have a short, like a obviously short stack in the table, and let's see how the players adjust to it. Pretty defined short stack here. Yeah, nothing, nothing's really changed too much. Daniel got a double. He was short. Now he's actually in third. That's our biggest shift. As Ilya is still your chip leader, four million. Pavel, Bruno, AD. Again, a lot of experience Not at this final table. Bit, yeah. What you got the big and of course Daniel Peterson. This big hand jacks against Kings. They switched positions with AD, kind of. Another A6 open for Ilya. This time seems to be a little bit better though. And with the defined short stack, everybody should be a little bit more careful with tributing moves and playing high variance post flop. So I'm still not, I'm not sure about this, but I can see the reasons. Yeah, he seems to like these aces. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, really? it seems to work good for him, to be honest. Like, everybody is playing wow. carefully. Pavel folds a eight off to the chip leader who he knows is a bit out of line. I mean, again, makes sense. Just, just a tough hand to play out of the big. He does fold. The, the deuce is also Vlad called, right? Vlad ended up winning that pot, and that... Yeah. That definitely did, was not a was not you wouldn't expect normally to call there. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think Ilya's strategy working well, and he's uh, chipping up here as Pavel going to limp in and eight ten off hand. Generally, you'd see check back does. I think probably some respect right from Pavel. Also, he knows knows Pavel knows what he's doing and not afraid. So both players will miss here. Mm -hmm. And still Seems going with that battle is just on a check boat mode and he will fall to any bed. I guess Ilya is gonna go for a half pot here or something. He goes even bigger, okay. But yeah. nicely done. It's Ilya's world today, 4.2 million. He is on the way to a good result, but again, wide open. Wide open today, and a lot of talent here today. Ace Jack suited, King Queen suited on the button. Definitely Pavel gonna want to play. Does call both players miss. Man, that's a pretty PLO hand. Ace Jack, King Queen, double suited, royal flush draws both players, and then the six seven four. No backdoor flush draw, even. I mean, you can't miss harder than this board for both players, and honestly, Pavel thinking that this is a better board for him, right? The low pairs yeah, under the gun, probably not opening. He's going to flat some pairs and, and good recognition and just takes it down. Yeah, but I was stepping in and kind of tired of uh, giving up pots. He decided to take a step and it worked for him nicely. King Jack. Off ace nine suited almost the same thing, same similar board with uh, 
similar type of hands and a suited ace and then uh broadway not quite suited this time, this time but he's the backdoor push which many times change stuff about um, turns and rivers but um yeah both players kind of need this flop and let's see if Ilya will show aggression here being the chief leader he does I like it. I like Not it. He gets friends. an ace ten, ace jack, ace queens in bad spots to fold ace king. You you know, tap to the side wants to get sticky, and then all those other hands you just get to fold. And again, the range, right? I think just uh, seeing how tight the players are, you know that you also get to use that to your advantage post flop and on certain board textures where they just don't get to have that you get to bluff. Even Whoa. although there, he did have the best hand. Look at this. You know, just flattening with the six three suited here. That that's out of bounds. Diamonds are a problem if they come. He is oversuited here, but let's see. Again, mm. a lot of boards people just miss, and then you get to take advantage. So five seven suited. We've talked about this. The completing, you know, it's better to have this than like a jack nine, right? But he does fold the five seven suited. So man, people are really playing tight. And here he goes. He has now outflopped his opponent, and he's in position. Yeah. And he just won the what can't against what when this this um, dynamic start to build up. Uh, people tend to start to feel personal personally about this. Let's see if this player is gonna have a battle. Well, again, above average turn card there for Ilya. He does now have a pair with open-ended and has a pretty good lock on this situation. Although, again, from his perspective, he's still losing to a lot of hands. He's still losing to, you know, mid pairs. King Queen could be in there. King Jack suited, slow down. So he's he's not sure where he's at, but he's gonna put a big bet and just get the snap fold from Vlad. No messing around as he is up to a whopping four point seven. Really, really interesting strategy Ilya is implementing, and it's working so far. Yeah, yeah, definitely. On the past line, Ilya, and we saw in the past that many players playing like this, like uh, win tournaments very often, but also uh, he can get into a very high variance situation and was a big part of his stack and finish up early. Same thing happened with Damian Sawas the previous week. Like he was chip leader like uh, for the majority of the tournament, but eventually he finished third while unfortunately losing his stack. So It's interesting because no one has uh, figured out what is the best way to approach final tables. Probably both ways are close to EV and some people just are fan of the one and some are fan of the other. So this always creates dynamics and that's why final tables are always unique and so interesting. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. And you just don't know. Certain people, uh, they, they, they just got that little pep in their step that day. You want to go for the win. You want to go for the pay jump. It just this, the positions. What, what do you think about the GG with the, the, the final table with the seat draws? Because it's interesting. Yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, first time I did the seat draws when I was on the main event of WSOP Online. <laughs> wow. I didn't really, uh, yeah, it was I didn't really know this future exists. And um, so I was uh, doing it for my first, seeing this for my first time when I'm on the Dallas with the final table. So yeah, I think it's cool. Um, it uh, brings an extra element uh, to the final table, like a strategy to, to pick your best seat. And um, I like it, to be honest. Um, and of course, I, I think it's fair, like it doesn't give so much advantage to, I mean, it can happen at the same time pretty randomly, 
for my final table uh, on GG millions, I timed out. I couldn't like I had 10 seconds to figure out was the best seat for me. And I was like observing, observing, observing. And at some point I just stayed on my seat. So um, but it worked well for me because I hit the good players on my right and yeah, so nice future and it's fun for everyone. Yeah. Well, Michael gets put in a tough spot with the ace jack. It's three bets small. I was saying this earlier, I think your your cam had gone out that the the feature is the the small three bet, the this this sort of the norm now on um you know, what are your thoughts on that? And when has that sort of shifted where now players are three betting super small in position? Yeah, I mean, with the ICM um, coming into play, uh, there is this risk premium like factor now, which is getting trendy and popular. Uh, people are open to sacrifice some EV just to not having the chance to burst. So this this is kind of related to the small sizing. It's like um, you can use like small amount of your stack uh, and like having a nice like both equity like you uh, risking uh, smaller to win like a decent pot. And if you end up like being four betted, like you still don't lose so much. And if you go post four, it's still very difficult for your opponent to realize his full equity. And uh, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. As Michael now, very, very short along with C3H, blinds are up to 2550K. Again, we played one winner today. Hope you're enjoying. And again, we are joined by Stoyan, who is hailing from Bulgaria, also has won one of the largest tournaments in the online poker history, the main event WSOP 2020s during the COVID time. What was that like when you actually, you made the final table? Tell me about how, how, how exciting that was. What did you have guaranteed when you hit the final table and what stack position were you? It was a three day event and we had a one week break between each day. Uh, so when I made day three, we were 38 players left because some guys busted in the last minute. We were playing down to 40. Um, at this point, I was guaranteed like 40K, uh, cashing 40K minimum, which was uh, still very big. And um, I prepared so professionally about this tournament. Like I isolated myself, like not like ignoring totally my girlfriend and friends. And I was <laughs> just studying poker. Um, uh, I was in the, in the day of the, of the final, um, I did a nice meditation session, some yoga, and I prepared my food like in the most optimal way so I can be sharp. Uh, I think this paid out nice. And um, like I was not thinking about, not fantas fan fantasizing about winning the event or something. I just wanted to make my best, to play my best, not making mistakes. Split here with the jack, and uh, everything happened so fast. Like I was chip leading most of the time, uh, playing aggressive and nice. And um, I was fortunate to reach the final table, and I was really, really focused. And um, then on the heads up. Uh, my opponent was not so experienced, to be honest, with heads up play. So um, I was kind of dominating, and but but I was not emotional. Like it's really, really hold on, hold that thought. Sevens to fours. We saw the limp raise jam, and fours oh is gonna God. hop into the lead, but needs now. Wow, double gutter five nine seven would actually. Whoa, it is gonna hold oh, and flat. 
sets himself up to be tied well uh, in a clear second and now he is sort of in the middle of the pack and 2.5 million is good for a second that was the hand of the day so far and you can't blame how he played it but he just stepped into it and got got rewarded pretty action board there he even turned the double gutter uh as wow big big moment there uh tell me so okay so you're prepared you get heads up and there was a deal or no deal and what was the amount you won for this tournament online no i think it was not possible it was not possible in the final uh so i was just focused and uh, trying to play my best and uh it worked out great i won it the moment i won like it, my mind just blew blew because uh I was so focused in the game, like trying to avoid being emotional, walking all kinds of emotions, just focused on the EV and the best play. And once I, re once I realized it's over and I just won it, like just my mind just exploded. Like I couldn't believe this happened. I was debating if this is real or some dream. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was an amazing feeling, to be honest. The feeling after winning GG Millions was pretty similar, even even though, you know, seems to be like an win and a possible call situation here. For... No. Yeah. yeah, he's got a call. King Queen suited. He's dominating a lot of hands. He is doing just that. King Queen suited. King Deuce. He flops the spades, looking very dire for a deal. Although chop potential now three or nine. And it is not going to be Bruno Man. Golfer claps <laughs> there. Nice. We need to give him props. Um, another unfortunate finish for him, but he seems to be very consistent. Let's hope he, he, he will have another chance <coughs> for better position. Yep. Yeah, he'll be back. We know that. We've seen him a lot and having great results. So congrats. I know, again, it's not super fun to go out early in the final table but this took an hour almost 50 minutes to lose one player no one was really going home and we did see a cup that that uh get there before a couple couple get there's right we've had two all-ins jacks to kings that jacks won and fours to sevens fours won so a couple hands from behind this could be problematic for Ilya. i mean this is like the dream scenario to put max pressure right you got king queen off it's a button raise bruno's gonna be super tight and he is gonna absolutely step into it and this is Looking good for dinner for me with you here. Uh, this is this is important pot three million, and this is the chip leader at risk and one of the best spots you can have. As that is not the flop you want to see when this is the case, and he is going to need to hit the straight on the river or else. It, it is king's full for Bruno, man. Absolutely, absolutely. What well, I mean, you just knew it, right? The writing was on the wall for that that play. It was just going to work so often, and your equity is going to be okay when you get called a lot, but not when it's in that spot. That is literally worst-case scenario, and Bruno now has a lot of ammo. To That's what with. we were talking about. Like, Ilya was putting so much pressure, and um, it was working so far well, but uh, at the same time, you're exposing yourself to hints like that, which can totally change your situation in the terminal. Bruno, the Brazilians out there, Praze, Boa, Boa Targi, Mi Esposa Brasileira. I have got 330 days of, of Duolingo in a row, a little streak going. I'm learning my Portuguese. Darren Elias, you know, he he goes he goes to do a tournament in Brazil. He learns in a couple months. That guy's just a different animal. I've been I'm, I've been my wife for mm, 10 years. I'm I'm getting there. I'm learning on Portuguese, but I I I, I just you know, I'm trying to learn poker for first, Stoyan before I can start doing side quests. So, you know, it's uh, it's just a little bit, five minutes here and there. But I love Brazil. I got a ton of love for them. And the Brazilian, very passionate country, passionate poker players, and always good to see Brazilians around. So. Also, I like the, this Latino vibe and all the countries, like, from this culture. People seem to be so emotional and, like, loving life and having yeah. fun. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely. I would say that's true. And in poker, super passionate. When they, one of those things at the World Series, certain countries they just get credit for having a great rail. When a Brazilian makes it, it's like people show up. You know, like there's a lot to do in Vegas. As you get older, you want to take a day off. You want to go to a pool. You want to do something. But like people in Brazil, it feels like anyone who's Brazilian, whether you know the guy or girl well, 
people just kind of show up and in, in support, which is cool. There's a, you know, you could say there's definitely a noticeable hierarchy of countries that do support like that. As we may, yeah, we're gonna get to see a. Let's see now another clip and Michael Detania, another Brazilian at risk. And the nines were in the lead. Ace on the turn, gonna turn him to 4.55 percent outs. Needs lightning in a bottle. That's a face card, and that is GG Ilya gonna recover some of those chips. Couple players get knocked down now. Again, that's what happens. Tournaments, people do collide. People do have to go out. That's how it works. 25k 50. We took a while. We are down to seven. I'm sorry, we're yeah, down to Michael, yes, seven. Good performance for him. I met him. As I said in Paris, really humble guy, nice one, nice, nice guy who seems to be very professional too. And Tilia recovering a bit after this hit against Bruno. It seems like they, they are now the two bigger stacks at the, the table. Yeah, and Vlad going to commit the King Jack suit. Definitely one of the approved aggressive hands to put your stack at risk. A nice play there. Picks up a timely one. Also, it helps when the chip leader's opening, right? A little more confident that you're going to be able to get a semi-bluff, semi-equity hand through as Daniel been quiet. Did double jacks the Kings. Yeah. And ace jack though gonna attack with those newfound chips again forced to sevens got in pre-flop did get it done i thought that was albania flag. a little bit on the larger side seems to be no actually it's, it's normal, yeah. yeah a little larger three bet does pick it up Have you been to Albania? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been traveling to what um, lately. Um, it's like I thought that was Albania. I, flag. I realized that's Robert. Montenegro. I've just I've been to Albania. That's probably like the most random country I've been to um, in my life, and I just was wondering because I know. Albania? It's, yeah, just like that was like somewhere I would never. You know, I don't know anyone there. I have no. Didn't know, know much about it. I just went there for a, for a final, for a soccer final like a couple of years ago. Um, and it was very interesting. It was Roma, Roma, Feyenoord for the, the conference cup or conference league. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was fun. It was good. It was a cool, interesting place. Yeah. I mean, this geographic, geographical part of the world is very beautiful. Uh, my country is nearby also in the Balkan region. And uh, I love the Balkans, really nice mountains and the Mediterranean Sea, of course, is beautiful. Yeah, no, it seems, seems so as Bruno takes advantage there. The stack situation does put pressure on Pavel, gets him to fold a weak king, 6-5 off, and now Pavel going to limp in. Opportunity now for Ilya to apply pressure and isolate this 3-4 offsuit. Um, at the same time, he can just check and play post for. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always interesting to me, like, what uh, will they choose? Because it's really false in EV, and so far he was picking the aggressive lines, but now he just decided to check. He's checking back the flop, too. I think it's also a nice opportunity to just try to steal the pot, but he gave chance to his opponent to hit and he did. Yeah, just deciding that, you know, I'm not interested. Don't have to win every pot. He's got the four high. Yeah, Maybe now it's, it's kind of mandatory to bluff. Like it's just four high, you cannot win. And you have a lot of juice eggs in your range, which you check back and play like this. Um, I think this time it's not gonna work just because it's hard for Pavel to have better hands here than Nate. He's also unblocking a lot of the bluffs that Ilya can have. I mean, he can have all kinds of bluff here. I mean, the tree is not so good, but 
still, I don't know. It's just so hard for him. I mean, he's mostly rapping a juice or just a total air, and he has a lot of those. So nice call by Pavel. I like it. And he's very experienced, so he catched, he catched this well. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna go upstairs. Ace queen gonna raise. Rudy got some chips finally, but getting pushed back on. Got a suited Broadway. Can't blame him. Opening seven handed, and he is that's disappointing, right? It's nice when the, he gets through just the big blind defense. You get to play or take it down, but now he is getting very much induced to play. Does not call. Mm -hmm. If 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 Pavel had two the same stack, let's say two point six, two point seven million, you think he's going to peel there? Queen ten suited for that small the min, that small raise. Mm. Yeah, what you were talking about, like um, these three baits. I mean, we saw Rudy Ford just decided to fold Queen Ten Suite Eight, which is a lot of equity. Like, uh, they are deep enough. You can see a flop, and I'm not really sure if I like the fold too. But Rudy seems to be more conservative, and uh, so far he's doing good. Like, staying quiet and just waiting for a good spot to put money in, not risking so much. Yeah, well, ace king, ace do so. We've really seen tight play out of the big blind. This is a action of action flops, top two versus top yeah. pair nut flush draw. I mean, Bruno's feeling good. Losing to jack 10 only really right now, right? Ace queens you would have heard from. And any other pairs. So yeah, I mean, ace, jack, ten, uh, yeah, first draw is possible. This is interesting. What is just probably just gonna check out this? Not really another option available. Um, ten is kind of an action QR for Bruno. Uh, I still expect him to bet. And um, just, okay, he decided to check. I like, I think it's close, but I like seeing a bet because it's just so hard for Vlad to check raise bluffs and you can still get a lot of protection with your bet. So I like seeing some small size there, but Vlad makes his flush now and he decides to check it. Interesting. Um, wow, it's still very wide. I mean, it's, it's not the it's a good river for him, but it's very possible for Bruno to have a full house there or something. So, what is probably thinking about this and uh, deciding to uh, just go for the check call? Interesting yeah. now to see Pavel. I mean, great situation for four bed bluffing against this uh, aggressive player, and he wow. does it. You blame him, wow. but it's so crazy. This equity though, still a real the chance yeah. as doesn't get the back the spade or the the wheel draw does come in on the turn for a chance but this is a massive massive pot all around and it is oh it looks yeah, scary it's a deuce Ilya gonna return timing to Ilya great timing and I don't blame the the four bed show like Ilya was so active and we judged a little bit uh earlier uh, when he he tributed and uh get got and double to bruno but this time his aggression paid off and we saw we saw the four bed jump and back to commanding cheaply cheaply Ilya. i think i'll use this time to Take a little break for a restroom and I'll be back 
Yeah, come back. King Queen Suda going to open Ilya 10 7 with the all in. Certainly won't be calling as we are down to six. We'll put that giveaway live for you as well. If you hit the thumbs up, that's the first part. We'll give a keyword here at the end of the show. And again, the Twitter, Jeff Cross Poker, pin tweet $50. This is live. What's up, Robin? Good to see you. Plenty of new faces today, a lot of similar and returning guests as well. Appreciate all of you really do. It's fun to watch the highest level poker, biggest buy-in you know, on the internet weekly, biggest prize pool, biggest names. And of course, we got world-class guests as Stoyan joins us to hold that up every week. We'll have another special guest for you next week at the same time, same place. And again, this, is, uh, this has been a treat to watch. We got six remain. Someone will have a title. Bruno has won before. Pavel had one before. He is no longer with us. So Bruno could be your three-time champ or we'll have a new winner on the GG Millions today. So let's see what happens. Bruno with three million. Definitely uh, in contention. Ilya, though, doing his best to put pressure on and keep his lead. Yeah, we are we are six handed and a couple decent looking hands here. King Queen off gonna go for the raise, not the shove. See this more now. A little mid coffee, mid midstream here. Gotta get a little uh a little bit of fresh brew. I hope everyone's enjoying. I'm having a blast. I appreciate you guys being here. And we're going to get the re-raise 23 Rudy. So if you're C3H, I guess this is, you know, could shove and pre you end up raising and now you're getting re-raised and, you know, a couple different ways to approach this does fold. Well, ace king button two three Rudy man, he's had quite a ride. Such it, it is wild during your score where you hit the multi multi million score, one of the biggest again the main event twenty twenty on GG, one of the largest tournaments I think it was at the time maybe second now if I'm not mistaken ever or it still might be the largest number of entries was. A well, it's eight. actually the the largest tournament it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. That is a nice one to have. Out of all the tournaments to, to run well and, and things to go well, was there, was there, was looking back, did you helm you fit? Did you, were you never all in? Is it perfect? Or did you have some, some get there, some big flips and were you at risk or give me a little bit of a, of a overview of your, your score and hitting that mirror, that, that magical run. I just tasted it. Like I, I finished, uh, second in chips in my white in day one. Um, it was interesting because um, at this point, let's see, uh, interesting show, Jack 10. Um, I was, yeah, <laughs> trying to satellite for it and I busted on the satellite with some very, very unfortunate situation. And I was kind of depressed out of this outcome. So I just decided to take a shot and uh, play it and uh, <laughs> I finished second in chips in my flight and um as i said we had a one one week break um day two was a really really long day uh i believe we played around 12 hours or something um uh, from 1500 players starting into day two we played until 40 players remaining uh and this tournament is with 30 minutes blind levels. So you can imagine how long we have played and how many hands happen. But um, it, it, it was going really good for me. And I maintained the big stack almost all the day. And I finished 13 chips. Um, so it was the chip lead in the last hand, actually. So I finished 13 chips for the final third day with 40 players left. And um, then I, it, the good run continued. At one point, I was a little bit down, and uh, 
but I maintained my composure and I managed to come back and in the final table also the most what, what was most first and second what was the difference in the heads up match that you can't look at this check raise by Vlad pretty pretty spicy. yeah like nice check raise we can see that Vlad is not just playing around like he's looking for a good situation and he's trying it and it seems like it seems like uh, our guy Stefan is kind of feeling this because he took a lot of time to decide if he want to continue somehow in the hand and many players will just give up here but he eventually decided to give up too. Uh, difference, yeah, difference was like, I think second place was 2.8, so we were playing for 1.2 million or something. For wow, is that big a heads up? And wow, look at this call, King 7, real mm -hmm. quick, hold that thought. Ace King gonna flop pretty well, of course, a little drama for a possible chop. Nice to be guaranteed at least a chop as he is gonna knock it out. Vlad playing well today, getting some hands, getting good spots. He is gonna take us to five handed as we have got some big names here left. And again, we will get the giveaway queued up here. This, just the next hand, huh? How good is that? On the button, he's gonna get a customer. Jack nine suited. Ilya has been playing very cautious from the big blind, but this yeah, is certainly- This is potential fireworks. Yeah. But again, look, the hint will just go to flop, and let's see if the flop is dynamic or not. And yeah, right. Double good shot for Ilya. Um, and this texture, I like even the big size from what no but he decides to go small um it's a nice spot for Iria to just put some bet now because he has a lot of sevens which he plays like this and i expect to see just a flat call from what no need really to to race um Wow. And Ilya just gets there. But let's see if Vlad will just give it up so easy. I mean, it's 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 interesting river, like definitely definitely hitting both players. Um there is some merit for Vlad to use the blocker effect of his hands and do something crazy. Uh, but at the same time, is he gonna how, how big of a deal is the blocker, the ace of hearts, when the board is paired, though? How much does that matter in this situation? Yeah, I mean, the point is if uh, Ilya is going to take all the time the this line with, with his full houses or he will decide to use like some check race strategy or something uh for sure it's a big point because Ilya I mean imagine if what just raises Ilya all, all his forces will be in a very bad situation and he will most likely just fall for flush just because he has a lot of full houses to protect his range Still not. I mean, again, a spot where all the three options are available here for Vlad. He can just go and uh, try to pick up some, wolf, for example, Jack 8, 8 9, um, 6 8, maybe. You know, there is a lot of games that miss. Uh, he can decide to race and wow. hold his Paul, yeah did have push. yeah it really felt close on all three and he did call get shown the bad news and that is a nice pop for Ilya gonna be up to six million and separate himself even more but what what were you what was your weight out of the three options what were you thinking he was gonna do there 
think I think uh, the, the call is the most reasonable because uh, there are still a lot of goods that both that are missing. It's hard to beat value because I don't believe Ilya will just play a naked king like this. Um, but uh, at the same time, there is a lot of both that miss, and uh, you still probably has have a better chance that you wanna walk raise. At least you wanna have some walker to the full house, so having a king or a ten is better with an ace of hearts, I guess. So I think what make a nice play, but another fortunate uh, run out for Ilya. So. My odds for uh, dinner are getting better. Yeah, this is this is uh, Ilya's world right now. He's he's done a good job. I mean, he had a little adversity where he ran king queen to kings, but he's right back up to the chip lead, double second even. So he's cruising right now with five left. Definitely his to to handle and, and finish the business if he can do it. Daniel has not really gotten to play much. He got in one spot where he was a four to one dog, coolered kings to jacks, and he got there. Other than that, though, I mean, he's really just not, you know, I don't think he's really had that many decisions, though. I mean, he's just been kind of not dealt into a lot of spots, and he's sort of just, you know, I think he's got to feel good, right, to be in with five left, 110 guaranteed. He could have got out easily. Jacks take kings and been, been out. Now he's. He led out to few spots. So. Just it's cheating. funny. It's it's funny like that. When you look at a final table and you start talking about, oh, I didn't get many good hands. But then, like when you're Ilya, he's opening eight four off. He's opening a six under the gun. There's spots that are close or even most won't take. So you really do have an option, right? You have options to play, to defend, to three bet, to sort of take a, a bit of a chance. Like there he goes, ace three, right? He find he's been quiet, uses his image, and does get good timing there to pick it up. But it is. Uh, it is interesting a final table distribution is very important you're not playing a lot of hands and you know it really it's it's you know it's a good time to run good right final table it's a good time to get good spots good hands get premiums and Ilya, who is going to get in a situation this time where again bruno bruno oh, the queen against going to be messing with him and he's got a good candidate he's got a good candidate here oh and he's just giving it up i mean yeah he seems to be playing like uh, showing some discipline and not getting out of line so much, Bruno. He showed a great performance at the Triton in London, like cashing five events for like, I believe, um, 1.8 million combined. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's an absolute beast. Yeah, Brazil's really, really. I say this a lot. I think Brazil's come a long way in terms of poker. I feel like they used to kind of get looked as, you know, as a stereotype pesci, right? More like fishy, kind of like really playing out there now i'd say they're they have some of the elite players in the world and and it's grown a lot very popular i mean akari Felipe mojave you can go on and name other big brazilian ambassadors for the game that have done a lot but poker is definitely very popular over there yeah i'm not sure how um true is this but someone told me that poker is like the second most famous sport if we consider sport as uh uh, poker is a sport after football, soccer. Yeah. So po poker is very popular in Brazil. You're right about this. Did Vlad just check back the turn? Yeah. Ah, uh, so. yes. Interesting check. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get the extra bet, but, I mean, that least. was definitely, there's other hands that play in different ways where you're going to get it called or valued or even, you know, play a huge pot. So that's a very interesting check back, but. Yeah. 
And then there comes the Rays. Interesting. I'll say this. Vlad's had a very curious game plan. I feel like he's really sort of been been playing sort of a, a different level, you know, different sort of a thought process and, and finding some unique lines today. Yeah, you can say that he has. Wow. Some, and he gets caught. Nice. Um, I mean, with the image of what uh, he is like, we saw him going for some spots. He check raised with almost nothing uh, earlier. And um, we expect that players are following the live stream. So probably they are picked up uh, on some some of those. And uh, he decided that what is for shit here. So he decided to, to make the hero call. But this time, what was, I mean, he, he kind of balanced himself. Yeah, that was that was a crazy hand. Here we go. Ace Queen Ely on the button here. Five handed suited aces are going around just flat like it. Kind of one of those yeah. hands that is uh you don't wanna you don't wanna uh, blow up and get blown off. You also you know, I think he has options there for sure five handed, but he just calls. I'm gonna get a uh, interesting board here. Yeah. I think he has to bet here. I like around half of the pot or something. Yeah, this is good. At the same time, you have to be worried that you don't have a diamond. It's much easier to bet with a diamond because uh, it's very it's much more easier to call a check race when you have a diamond. And of course, we're, check, we are calling with this, but um, a lot of terms you will end up. But um, what also taking the passive line and the not first draw. You're, you're um, saying it's easier if you're Ilya to call if you had ace queen with like the ace, you're saying with the diamond, if you get check raised? Yeah, for sure. It makes a difference because. When a diamond hit, diamond hits, it's much more easy for him to continue with ace of diamond, for example. And diamonds are like 25% of the day. So 25% of the time, he will get much easier decision, much more valuable decision. Yeah. Well, here we go. Tens, big hand. Going to just go ahead and rip it, grip it, rip it. Five left. Daniel is your short stack with a million, six million your chip leader, three million, two point five, two million. So again, a little bit of everything here. Seventy k big blind. So Daniel doesn't have a lot of room to work with as Vlad with fours. Also Vlad, a key pot. He lost sevens to fours blind on blind. He he set up a nice pot for himself and got got uh, got got on the run out. So. You know, he's in a different position. He would have been with a much bigger stack. He's he's really been active today. Yeah, Bruno also decided not to attack him here and just check back and playing small ball. Is the pair. This will give him some playability. Um, maybe he'll just check back now because, okay. Um, it's kind of difficult if you get check raised here. I mean, you decide to check back with 6-5, not taking a high value in swine. At the same time, you just decide to bet the flop, exposing yourself to a potential check raise. And, and what gets there? Hmm. Yeah, nice, nice welcome sight there on the river, straight on board, but... Straight possible on board. There's a few straight opportunities. It is blind on blind, wide, wide ranges. And Bruno actually does have a six as well. But I mean, this sizing is uh, 
pretty greedy, right? I mean, it's it's yeah, it's, it's greedy, but at the same time, that's how what probably just uses his image because we saw him like try to steal pots and wow. look at this, it worked perfect for him. Wow, it's very how his strategy works. Very interesting situation there. Interesting um, indeed, yeah. You cannot blame Bruno for trying to catch him because what showed that he's capable of bluffing. And he had a good blockers. And nice value bet for for what? He's not giving up after this bad beat earlier. <laughs> yeah, Vlad. Vlad is. Uh, this guy looks 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 focused today. I feel like he's he just sort of still. He's my pick right now. I just feel like he he's playing well. He's got a good game plan, and he also lost a huge pot as a favorite. Still in second right now. So I mean, Ilya, of course, six million double second is your front runner. But I'd say Vlad's right in the mix to give him a, a go. And and Bruno again. Guy just super talented, and wow, good flop here. Daniel finally getting some nice situation for himself. Oh. It's a lot of board to have. Hmm. Could slip one over. Nope, small bet. Really, he has the king of clubs, so probably he'll just call one straight and see what's going to happen on the turn. The Deuce is usually a good card for the big blind range. Um, it's curious to see if Rudy is going to use this in some way or just he'll check back for the showdown with the king. And um, yeah. Yeah, Daniel gets a little cute, which again you mentioned the deuce does favor there, maybe the big blind. So a nice, nice hand to slip over, right? You get some, maybe some bluffs. You still are super Daniel strong, and you got the nut flush draw, redraw. So. The range dynamics here, checking the base pen on, on the turn, not exposing himself to uh, some raises, although his hand is strong enough. And. A nice spot for him, giving him a little bit of bread, bread. Ace King, Ace Jack suited Bruno just got in a leveling war with Vlad and Vlad with a very advantageous situation. And Bruno, it's a lot of hand five handed. I mean, for me here, you should just show for flat call. And he just made a free bet. Um, as I said earlier, with Ace King of Suit, uh, you're basically hoping to hit the Ace or King High board and go from there. And uh, it's very hard to play most of the flops out of position against the hijack. Wow. I mean, Vlad yeah, gets Bruno in the cookie jar as he avoids the flop let's see the turn does have chop opportunity and see the player profiles on the left and right and it's clean vlad is gonna eliminate make us forehanded we'll cue that giveaway here shortly for the 50 or 100 dollar keyword along with hitting the thumbs up that is how you will enter we appreciate all of you and that is a massive pop vlad is in business yes with um, after this brutal bed beat earlier Silence against force, I believe it was. What is coming back strong? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's that is a big pot. I mean, man, yeah, again, a lot of hand and, and Vlad just showing the game, playing the game and, and aggressive. It's more fun, right? To be aggressive and, and you get paid on big hands, you get good spots and you, you put guys to the test. So really creative bet sizings and and, you know, kind of got him to bite there. But again, Bruno, uh, not afraid and very willing, but 
wasn't meant to be today. He will not be winning another GG Million. He's done that before. And we're going to have a new champion on the GG Millions today. And again, Stoyan, appreciate you taking the time over there and uh, being with us. It's always, again, no guarantee, but we like to say booth, the booth magic thing is real in general. So I, I wish you luck in your future stops. And usually there's good results to follow, but I can't claim, we can't claim the credit as you're a world-class player, but I do think it does help people that come in the booth and get, get a little bit of, uh, you know, get to watch and, and talk things through and look at some things, you know, it's like a forced study session in a way. So it's, it's good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, another interesting spot here, like Rudy's finally showing some creativity and, uh, going for a booth here on the board, which favors his range. But Tilia is not like, he's not giving up easy. He just put the race here. Um, for sure, like uh, commenting hints uh, helps a lot. And uh, I noticed that when I started coaching players, um, my game started to improve a lot, my personal game, because uh, I was constantly like communicating with players and I could uh, catch their thinking processes and how they perceive certain situations, which allowed me mm, to like kind of understand how the majority of players, like how different players think about the game. So if you manage to use this to your advantage, like you are much more prepared the next time you face someone and um, you just keep yourself active like constantly thinking about sports i can see if i get a longer break out of poker like if when i come back the first few tournaments i'm a little bit rusty and uh, i need to catch up with the new dynamics and kind of remind myself some some of some of the spots so like commentating a final table like this is very interesting um yeah yeah it's uh it, it is fun I, I i mean i it's just it's great i like doing it across different different uh online live it's it is always fun to watch and you know it's it's cool because then you end up noticing maybe you did a final table and you, you end up playing with these guys frequently or at another final table coming up and you have a little better idea that their their game plan of course things change based on who's where what seat stack sizes but it is definitely definitely interesting and uh Happy it's fun i guess i'm going fun. here for the trip with the trip bed. sorry for interrupting you but it was a really nice situation for him with the is just like i'm walking over the um open race for Sophia because uh, he showed that he's playing a wide range uh, not having a five or a six is having a nice and walking effect holding those hands like five six of suit and stuff so nice one and Tilia dropped the not sure if emoji so he's kind of showing that He's ready to battle and not. And yeah, nice score here. 41,000 locked up for the King 10 going to pass on calling off. Makes makes sense. Ilya going to put the pressure on. Still has a chip lead and obviously a very strong hand considering the situation. And a couple of big hands here. Can Vlad find a way to avoid a big pot? I mean, four-handed cutoff button. You know, I definitely could be flatting often, but maybe in this scenario with the short stack, right? It favors three betting here to, <laughs> to flatting, but he does go flat. Probably going to mix in there. Yeah, I like both options. Like you, like you said, we have a defined short stack here, really short stack. So Rudy should be careful a lot of, a lot of against the three bets. At the same time, he should be opening a tight range. So I like but But also... Ilya being there on the small blind kind of helps. Um, and you, you need to be worried about him there of poor betting or potentially even squeezing. 
but um, it seems like what is gonna win this one? Yeah, I mean, Vlad, the heart, he's got a pretty nice. I don't, I mean, what, what is he? Let's see. He's, I mean, is he thinking of is he thinking about raising here? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, that'd be, that would be pretty ambitious, but he does call and wins it. So a little bit, of course, unlucky. A little justice, right? For Vlad would have uh, knocked out Rudy seven to fours blind and blind many players ago, but now forehanded. He is in second, closing on, on the chip lead. Let's get that keyword going for a $50 or $100 giveaway keyword will be stoyan or gg poker it's going to be gg poker stoyan and insert your gg poker username or 50 or 100 dollars. if you're in a jurisdiction that doesn't have gg i'm sure you have a friend that does give it to them gift it split it with them whatever put in a gg poker username good luck to you guys out there appreciate all of you for watching let us know where in the world you are watching from we and are in. Go here. all in computer hand queen seven off for the math but little too much what do we got 80 big blind it's he's the chip leader there's chips out there he doesn't mind probably having the shorter stack around carry the one i don't know what does he got 162 80 320 in the middle calling four 300 what how much more is that 400 no four 380 calling pretty close but yeah, I think this size to fold. I mean, at this stage, you, you, you should also consider that uh, keeping a short stack in the game is working on your advantage because uh, you can continue to be aggressive and the, ne the next big stack is uh, immediately to your right. So. It's kind of a good situation now. Cool. Nines against King Queen. Let's see. We got a Price flip. Nines to King Queen. King Queen. Daniel, can he stay around? He has got no spade. That makes it three to one chance where the nine or a spade on the river. And it's a nine. Oh. nasty nine. Rives. And Ilya is going to send Daniel packing dramatic fashion. You yeah. don't expect to be that way, but it is. And yeah, that is uh that is a that is a, a dirty one. Dirty, dirty one. Three handed. We got the giveaway pending. We got the tweet pending. Let me see how many people for the tweet. We will pick that as well. And we are going to have, yeah, so far look at Stoyan's in there. You can follow him as well on Twitter. We are keeping up. We're gonna play to a winner. Appreciate the the love. A lot of comments, a lot of a lot of fun we're having today. Over 100 thumbs up so far. That is how you get active. It is GG Poker for the keyword sp space story and space your GG Poker username. And you got to hit that thumbs up. We will pick that very shortly. And we are going to see if I kind of felt it was going to be Vlad and Ilya. It was shaking out that way. They did have the big stacks. Bruno was a wild card, right? He, he could have, uh, he had a good stack, could have easily been here right now. And 2 3 Rudy. He's done a good job making it to the podium. Has run well in spots, but these guys work cut out for him. These guys have got have been playing great, and they have a lot of chips. So he is your favorite to be third place finisher. Although, of course, a lot can happen. But man, when you're running like this, ace on the river in these big pots, this is uh, going to make it tough. And what a wonderful river for what here again. Um, it almost seemed that Rudy will. Get some chips, but now he's in a very difficult situation. Again, what check back the turn? I think he's. I mean, it's very polarizing. He can have all kinds of buffs at the same time, all the A6. So, classical. Both catching situation for Rudy. Now, if you are playing wife, you usually want to start looking for tails and some signs from your opponent so you can take a better decision. But 
Rudy just decides to fold here. Nice fold by him. Staying alive. And getting first the next game. Yep. I mean, yeah, good good fold there. I mean, you could see you could see the, the merit to call. Definitely going to be some bluffs, and he did make a good fold. And again, really decision-making has been, been world-class, and that seems to be a theme on the GG Million. Definitely not many people giving it away here. A lot of great players, great plays, as we're getting to see some elite play, and we will see a winner today. Big, big purse, as always. Always he's a quarter million plus today, almost 300K to first. No deal-making available. See that question frequently. Yeah. I was not aware about this when I played my final table. I was wondering if we can make deals, but yeah, it kind of like this. Playing for the maximum. A limp free race from Vlad showing um, resistance. And can't work yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would like to see doing it with some probably ace, but uh, it seems like Vlad is trying to pay more attention to the dynamic of the table and what kind of player he's facing and uh, the blockers and the combos he's giving quite less significant less uh, attention all right four is going to take a stand five seven suited won't be calling off so again two three rudy kind of playing roulette a russian roulette and he is going to be he is going to be on the chopping back 1.5 though getting getting around 20 blinds Mm. Nine seven suited, three eight off. I mean, Vlad really playing playing the interesting brand today. And and here we go, Ilya, not to be deterred, gonna go and kick it up here. And a pretty nice hand to check call does hit the middle pair. And here's that situation: we see the the weakest hands isolate right, and then get a board like this. And a lot of times we get to target off that mid, you know, Jack ten, Queen ten, King nine, Jack nine suited. So he does. Does go, I mean, interesting. He checks back on the a six seven board. He does decide not to yeah. continue the story here. I was thinking the same like if you isolate here and hit an ace five block, basically, is something which you hope is one of the better folks for you. But at the same time, like he didn't pick any equity, so he just gave up basically. I mean, I still like to see a delay, delay Sibet from Milia, but I mean, he kind of felt it good because Vlad hit the seven, so. I, I gotta say, Vlad, Vlad feels dangerous to me, you know? He just seems like he is really, really pulling out some tricks today. He just seems super in tune. To what's going on and, and really just just spot on so well he's played well today and he actually is your current chip leader by a hair with the yeah, big line out there by one the chip lead for the first time in this final table it's pretty close we can call that tied for chip lead but yeah it's yeah, it's right there he's got the he's got the theory he's got the slight edge as we got the robbie in the big line Ilya. Jack four suited, Jack seven off, and these guys are definitely aware that the third stack is super different in chip size and actually a, you know, it's a good size jump between third and second. What's that? 50, 51,000. And then 65 will be for the playing for the winner here as Jack four suited gets a pretty favorable flop, has the gut shot, the Jack high four straw, Jack seven off. Not interested. And Rudy is staying patiently, and now he's getting a good hand. Um, with twenty, with twenty big blinds, he just decided to jump.
lot of notes I got this hand. I gotta say, this has been this final table. There's been a lot of lot of interesting hands and a lot of a lot of peculiar, or I should say, not peculiar, but interesting lines. Vlad in particular has stood out for me today. Yeah. I think uh, I think he's got the momentum right now. I just feel like he's Ilya's done a great job from chip leader to just kind of chipping up. He had a little bit of adversity, but he's really played well too. So we'll see. Someone's gonna be a new GG Million champion. It's exciting. And Rudy. I'm going for the big size here. Yeah. Well, I don't blame him. We expect Ilya here to put pressure on raising this one. Yeah. It's gonna work well for him. Yeah, five four suited. King ten suited, a lot of hand again, risk premium the lowest, right? Doesn't have to worry about going out right now, so a little yeah, extra wide indeed. shoves and doesn't have to worry too much. Not a crazy if he somehow gets called there and goes out. So he's got he's got some work to do before he can get back into it and can use that to your advantage sometimes. A little extra little extra courage, a little extra light shoves, get pick up pots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's kind of simple now for Rudy. He, 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 he should just stick to the GPV strategy if he is aware of this, and uh, it should be easy game for him. Now, just like a very, like, look what a flood from Ilian. I mean, this could work fantastic for him because Rudy has a great spot to squeeze jump here, and somehow he gets away. I mean, I'm not sure if I will, <laughs> but nice fault because he was definitely getting snapped called by Ilya here. Yeah, this is, uh, see if he can get out of the way here. And uh, East Queen just somehow is no longer the best hand. Very interesting run out. Yeah, what of what of rivering going on this final table? This is this is a this is a big big pot. And interesting bet size now from Ilya. He decides to go big. It's probably just. For value, like he tries to look polarized, uh, he doesn't expect his opponent to have much stronger hands so often. And I guess, oh, and he gets the fold. You, you think that's for so for value there? What hand do you think he could get called by? I mean, if if, he, if he's acting like that, he's polarized. Uh, he can just get called by any pair um, because. Basically, Ilya looks like a jack or nothing there. So, what can we saw that what is like the, the old school saying, playing the player, not the cards. So, I guess Ilya catched on this and just tried to um, level what into calling, but it worked the opposite way. That, that's what I believe it happened. It, it could be some different. Thing, but it seemed like this happened to me. Now Rudy gets the king. Nice timing for him. Is yeah. What is in the rebate both? And King's gonna go and pick it up. So again, Rudy fighting. He is. He is by no means out. Coming, it is wide. Wide open. Right now, 2.7. He's back in it in a big way. Jack 9, yeah, it, 3. It almost felt like we were waiting uh, for Rudy to bust and uh, start the heads up stage. But Rudy is not giving up so easy in his thing alive. And here, going to hit top pair. Queen 3, spade, queen. Jack 9 has a spade. I mean, pretty... 
pretty interesting spot. Jack Nine going to feel comfortable, you know, start out with top pair. And uh, this could go. You know, again, going for the big size. Uh, yeah, good combo to do it. Like, you don't have a lot of equity to sacrifice if you get raised. At the same time, you have a lot of turns to battle. This is not one of them, though. And the situation is getting good for Rudy now. Usually you see a check back here and a pot control, but Rudy decides to wait here for protection and perhaps a team value. And he gets the fault. So Rudy is on fire the last few minutes and Yeah, Vlad Vlad uh checks back King Eight. We saw Rudy limp jam after the raise with fours to sevens this time he limps threes and he's going to come up betting on the ace 10 deuce I, I like it right your opponent a lot of ace x going to be raising he decides to bet and the king eight sticks on was uh curious and hits one of the best cards he pairs the king and also a heart which he has the yeah, better heart so the best, right? good float there for vlad although like he's going to be he's going to come out and bet okay yeah interesting to see what betting now in the previous spots, we saw him check back top pairs on the turn, and now he just decided to go and bet. Uh, he is definitely mixing it up there, and that makes him very unpredictable and hard to play against. And as you said, he is not, he's definitely not using a standard approach. And uh, yeah, interesting to watch him. Six five suited four eight. So there you go. Ilya's starting to take some of that bottom of the range stuff. And Vlad, some nice suited connected. This is almost deja vu to the nine seven of clubs. So he is going to come and check call this time. Whiffs completely. No mid pair for Vlad. Ilya with absolute air ball here. See if he does decide to take this and, and create one of these situations where on the top boards he gets to leverage it. So maybe does take a shot. Just doesn't go for any. Bet maybe delayed C bet, but Vlad now pairs the five. Yeah, we saw Ilya giving up on similar texture earlier, so I guess he is just trying to avoid uh, like making up big buffs in these textures. Uh, we can notice that what is going down in anim, which might put a little bit more stress into his decision making process. Now he turns his five into a buff, and it seems like it's gonna work. <clears throat> Interesting to see that taking his time here, like noticing, uh, like understanding that what what just might be just full of shit and maybe thinking about even I don't know raising or calling um, Yeah, this is uh this is all of a sudden they're very it's a battle. It's a battle, yeah. The situation changed from like twenty years up twenty minutes uh ago because we had Vlad and Tila with big stacks and Trudy with under twenty bigs and now it seems like it's anybody's game. Although Vlad is in a good situation now with his not first draw and two other cards. Um, he checks back again. He doesn't want to risk getting crazed and he wants to realize his full equity and just checks back for the showdown. Ace guy is good. 
Yeah, and Vlad now with an actual chip lead, and Ilya with a nice hint. Vlad will defend 5-3 suited. Doesn't get any help, so 10s in the lead, two overs, but still heads up three-handed in position. 10s going to go with a small bet. And the check raise. Look at Vlad. 36 seconds on the action clock there. You can see three minutes 30. That's a chess clock. Every player starts with 15 minutes. And it's my man, cool. my man Vlad is absolutely speeding without a governor. He is just finding lines and doing not doing doing shenanigans in spots that is just working very well. Tens, do you are you surprised? Tens to bet fold there. I mean, I guess there's not really many draws, but yeah, I mean, if you're folding tens, you're probably folding a lot. And uh, especially against Vlad, who is showing a lot of aggression, maybe you can just peel one street because uh, you will, you are kind of locked on the turn because you have a lot of ace x which you're gonna uh, just call and a lot of kings. And usually, Vlad, if he has a bluff, um, a lot of the time he will just give up on the turn, right? Well, this 7-4 club can't have a much better flop. Double gutter, flush draw, do six club. Seven or four, four would be good as well. I wouldn't know it, but let's see if Vlad is going to keep on firing here as he does slow down. Queen high, best hand, although Ilya is going to find a lot of ways to win this pot, and a big part of that being getting there as there's a ton of outs for him. Let's see what he does here. He is going to go big. Hmm. What I'm interested, what was interesting for me, if Ilya fall there on the turn, if Vlad is gonna continue battling his 5 3 suited after he check raised the ace ace king. Um, yeah. Or he will just look for a better combo. All right, we're going to pick the winner here soon when we get to heads up. So you guys still do have a chance to be entered in that 50 or $100 GG ticket. Let's take a look at our 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 wager. So you have Ilya. And do you have... Wait, are you... You've got Ilya for sure, and you have... Uh, you have Rudy as well? Do, do you have... I think we have Rudy, and I'm not sure about what. Do you remember who picked what? I don't know. Vlad? Oh, I got Vlad, I think, because he was uh, second in chips to start. So I think you took Ilya and I took Vlad and mm -hmm. I believe. Is that right? Is it done by chip stack? I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely got Vlad. Yeah, that makes sense. And Rudy, I'm now I'm not sure about. Yeah, you can check this, but I believe... We're going to we're gonna have, to, we're gonna have to check. I, I guess it might be, not be relevant. It might not be I relevant. I believe Rudy was my last pick. You picked Daniel, and then Rudy was the last one. Like I, I think this was the case, but we, we can double check. And shot clock could come into play. Queen ten had not the best hand now it does and if you're rudy this is not a fun run out you have no heart and you are all of a sudden go from top pair to way down the list of hands you are beating and vlad with the queen high vlad. flush it's strong yeah. enough to follow bet here it's not pulled by rudy he's not gonna mess around And what is now chipping up? Um, yeah. Seven big blinds for him. Very comfortable stack. Oh, this isn't going to work. Ace eight. I mean, he's got 16 blinds, very strong hand, and I guess it's... That's the only one option here. Yep, that is upstairs and should work.
As Ace Deuce gonna get a force of fold in the small blind and Queen Six, that clock is gonna come into play likely during. Mm -hmm. Let's see how Vlad's got the lead, so he's got plenty more hands to play. You can see the payouts: one eighty-one, two thirty-two, two ninety-seven. That's what's available for the players. No deal making available in the GG Millions. Play for it all, as we will get to see. What is going to happen here as Ilya is got the ace deuce queen six just finds a nice pot again. Yeah, like Vlad is pressured now um, with the low time he has on his clock, but he still still manages to find these bluffs and uh, stay aggressive. Uh, it's going to be interesting to follow if. If he will be like able to to keep like this unconventional style um, going on with the short clock, because for sure uh, his decision making is much more complicated than someone who is just following the basic strategy. That's what I think. Queen, relevant club here. Sixes. Tough, but has a pair. Beating a lot of hands. Ilya, does he attack? Yeah. He's definitely someone who likes to attack. And now I really... Good spot for just open shoving the ace eight. Yeah, twenty three Rudy is again back down pretty short. He's actually had some pretty unfortunate runouts. The Jack eight, ace mm -hmm. on the river, ace king, and then again with the heart, queen ten. So you know, it's, again, he's may look like oh he's kind of getting run over, but he's he's sort of just had some some poor shakeouts. And here, this is everyone with something. Ace nine, ace three. He's gonna bet commit and Vlad king queen suited. The blinds had just gone up, so he's got less than 10 blinds. So, yeah, this is in the middle, and we are going to see five with slight advantage, Rudy. We saw an ace was gone from Ely in the big blind. King, queen, suited just feels like a favorite. With the clubs, it feels more so. Slight favorite. Now favorite for Rudy. It flip-flops. A four would chop, and let's see. It is a queen on the river, and the heads up we all were looking for. It felt like it was going to be Rudy, though, again. Played well down the stretch after getting lucky forced to sevens earlier. Has played well, then ran poorly. But hey, it all comes around. And now we got the heads up. We got a dinner on the line. We got a 50 or $100 sweat for the audience. What else do you want? This is all you can ask for, a battle. And pretty even at that, I'd say, you know, Ilya now is in second. But um, I don't know. What, what's your wager on? You got, you got your guy Ilya from the start. But I'd say Vlad with the chips, and he seems like he's got a good momentum. Definitely. Vlad is in a good momentum. And he seems to be very experienced, like his first cash is in 2010. It is more than 13 years of playing poker. And let's see. It's going to be... And these guys, like, they were battling, like, the whole final table. It seems like it's between Vlad and Tilia all the time. They were in some involved in some situations together, and now they let's see the final the final fight. Yeah, this is and yeah, this is this another is... spicy play from what here. Yeah, definitely. Man. Yeah, this is an attractive strategy. Yeah, this feels it feels like Vlad is uh is is got it got it sorted out here. It's got it feels just like he's in the zone, but hey, again, heads up lock can happen. Ilya is certainly a competent player, has played well and has had the chip lead for the duration of the final table until sort of that the final stretch here. So again, wide open, jack nine, king queen, two decent hands for heads up, king queen to check back, jack nine. It's got 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 a decent bit of the board here. Mm. Is gonna bet. And Jack 
nine. Still the best hand. King queen with the nut no pair. And Ilya thinking of value or just checking. Those bets. Snap fold from Vlad. I mean, could think about it, right? There is a few hands. He had no spade in his hand. He had the best I no pair. He wants to, to save some time also because he's just 20 seconds in the book. And... Yep. Yeah, both players low on the shot clock. And one very low. Uh, I mean, how much do you think that impacts you? If you're Vlad right now, I mean, you get down to zero, it hits it. Like, how much do you think that really impacts at this? Well, because it's heads up, right? It's it's a little yeah. bit, uh, it's fast. It's good, yeah, I'm a good one to ask because uh, my work expired, like, when we were three, three people left and, uh, uh, and I had to take a fast decisions. I think it's very important if you're experienced in heads up. For example, I, I played a lot of spins and heads up hypers, so for me, it was much easier. Um, but if you're not experienced, this might have a, a big impact. And uh, I mean, in, in heads up, it's very important to be very sharp and fight for every chip out there. So you definitely could miss some situations and some spots when you're pressured about the time. And uh, I think it's important, more important than in the other hands earlier. And no player here going for it. Eight high, can't expect to have the best hand. Let's see if he takes a shot at it. He's already already had the best hand, but he does go for it and takes it down. Nice bet. Also, sometimes you want to optimize your bet size, maybe like make it type it in the box but uh when you're pressured out of the time you just click the button and, uh, Ooh, the rockets Ilya gonna kick it up and that should end the hand quickly Six seven, hello. This has got a potential problem for Ilya. He's got the nine high with a gutter. Definitely one he's gonna want to be, want to be betting. Ilya even doing a little time bank treatment just just with, you know, if it's a good time to do it right here. He's gonna check raise well and nine five yeah. with a gut shot and an over. I mean, and if seems you remember, he did it. check raise earlier on the ace king king with total nothing. So I'm not sure if Ilya. It enough time to see this, but you just give it up. Which is kind of tight with the good shot. Mm, but yeah. Ooh, bit of a problem here for Vlad. Ace eight right in the middle of sort of Strong enough, it's heads up. They're deep, though. Ace-10 in the lead, and he decides to go post-flop with it. And now, Ilya, a little less exciting with Ace-10 off here. Yes, still you should see bet very often this, but also it's fine to check it. I mean, if he goes for the small size, what will continue for sure here. And um, so very often in heads up, you face this situation that you have this card which you can like continue battling or you just can give up. And it's very often you decide the end of like, your situation and maybe tournament. He goes for it. Wow. And let's see if what showed a lot of uh, yeah creativity, but now it just didn't felt like it. Now, as you said, like the time pressure may, may be a factor. For example, if he had two minutes on the clock, he could take time and think if he can continue here, if he can do something. You know, he, he just played it straightforward. Yep, Jack-8, nice flop there. Got the straight. Ace-8 checks back again. Vlad just seems to know board textures, situations, where he's got showdown, where he needs a bluff, 
what he's doing and, and Ilya here with uh definitely gonna want to get some value of course with the second nuts gotta feel good heads up gonna go with the big bet unblocking mm -hmm. pairs you know no club either he could get his opponent with the flush draw or pair flush draw or you know 10x there that gets sticky but is gonna go ahead and take it down this is this is a pretty even match i would say you know like again i think vlad's kind of figured out the rhythm but it does seem like Ilya is super strong player as well yeah, definitely exciting match. I mean, if, if, even if you don't know, if even if you're not experienced in poker, like um, we could definitely see this guy, guys were kind of standing oh. up. Ooh. Ace versus nice. I mean, yeah, Ilya is gonna, most likely going to triple it. But what still can just what here and mix. I think so, but I think he sees the frustration. He's got the time bank. I think, you know, eights is a pretty big hand and, and heads up, and there it goes. We're going to get the money in here, and this could flip-flop big time for Ilya. This is uh, this is with eights are not being raised as a bluff here, so now we are we are going to like Nice Knights are in a spot now. I mean, these guys are playing aggressive, but still nines, it's – Kind of you beat all the buffs and uh, you are crushed of the value from blood strange. So I like the flat. Wow. And, uh, Four seconds on the clock. Yeah, small bit. I'm gonna give him some time to think about this portal. So and there's no strategy. That is. That's a tough card for both players not going to like that. Yeah. But. Um, I think what can still make another small bet because, uh, yeah, like, it's, wow. it's kind of a yeah, nice hand by Vlad here. <clears throat> it could be, like, over if he just jump. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, last last chance here to get the hit the thumbs up, type in the keyword GG Poker Space Stoy and Space Your GG Poker. Usually I'm going to announce the winner. It'll be again 50 or 100 if Vlad wins 100, if Ilya wins 50. Advantage Vlad. Also, Stoyan, I know you like fine dining. I'm sure we'll go somewhere nice for a dinner either way. And uh, I, at the moment, we're, we're, uh, it's an advantage to Vlad. So we'll see. See if he can finish it out. Got the Twitter as well, Jeff Gross Poker pin tweet. Guys can go there and get in for the fifty dollar opportunity. I'll put that link one more time in the Twitter, or I'm sorry, in the in the chat for GG Poker on the YouTube channel. So good luck to everybody. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, obviously if cards face up, I just feel like nines it might heads up that stack depth. You know, run it. You could get a like that exact one of that like small percentage of why to get it in is a hand like sixes, sevens, eights, or something. Sevens or eights. I guess he doesn't think there's too many mid, like lower pairs that are going to click back on him, right? That that, that would play Five like that. Five seconds so. in the clock of what and some... Yeah, wow. he was definitely thinking about it here. And it felt like he's just time pressure. I and mean, he just decided to fold here and and maintain the chip leading stack. Um, yeah, eights versus nines was definitely uh, interesting him. Um, I think it's, it's like reasonable to just call the tribet with the eights and, uh, and they're still deep enough and, uh, going call in with eights there is, I mean, it's, it can be too bad, of course, but it's very easy to get crushed, to, to get into tens plus or something like that. And then, or you just flip against the ace king case queen, so I like just fighting the tribet. But, um, yeah, the same goes for the knights. And what gives up here with his bottom pair? Uh, although he had some merits to continue. 
Ace Queen. Yeah, pretty clear. Pretty clear upstairs. What and what do you think in the moment? You would have flatted the nines or would you have gone with it there? Wow. Wow, Vlad. Woo. Yeah, this I think Nines played pretty good. And what showing that he's again like getting out of line, trying to uh, to push his opponent and apply pressure. Playing the player, not the cards. Yep, Deuce Five got a got a heart in there and has got a gut shot, so this time just calls and whoa. Let the turn. Wow, this is quite a interesting situation. Deuce four. I mean, this is a massive cooler in this board in this spot. It's a uh, both players aggressive. We can see a lot of chips going in here. Just calls. And mm -hmm. it's very likely to check race now with the four yeah. because. Ilya can value better a lot of basics and um, yeah, four is pretty strong. And yeah. snap okay. call, no raise. Yeah, I mean, kind of he got lucky because Ilya just decided to go with the over bet, which is very yeah. polarizing first. Yeah, eight, that is that definitely could have got. I mean, uh, that run out could have got the money, and of course, with trips first to turn gut shot. And as it stands, Vlad has no time bank. One minute for Ilya. We are going to play to a winner. We're going to see who can get it done. Blinds are up seventy one hundred forty k. Still plenty of play. And Ilya, Vlad, uh, Vlad, kind of in control, but all of a sudden, a couple, couple, uh, you know, a little bit of aggression with some weak holdings stepped into it, and then gets a nasty turn card there for the gut shot, and he is now your underdog in terms of chips but gets a nice nice flop here and unlikely to win more chips but it is a wide open game who do you think is going to win let's type one for vlad two for Ilya. either one of these players will be a new gg million champion oh which six is against aces this could get big wow we could flip flop again here no i can yeah, see what like Ilya just jumped maybe i mean i don't like it i prefer just flatting but we did crazy dynamic I could see him just jamming. We see we have seen this very often. But Tilia shows some discipline and plays it standard. The thing is that with these sixes, with, with these pocket pairs, like if you for bet a win and your opponent goes very likely you're uh, behind a lot, like you have very little equity. And at the same time you don't block in the folding range of your opponent so good so um you know yeah i mean you know from the school of thought Ilya, yeah he, he ends up saving a bunch of chips there interesting what no one want they they want this they want this uh they want this title. The trophy, of course, the, the difference is decent size money, 65K roughly between the two spots. But again, the title, the prestige, all of it. What do you think about trophy Stoyan? Did you get, you got a bracelet in the mail though, right? You got the World Series of Poker bracelet for winning the, the main. That was the main event in 2020. Uh, what do you think about tournaments and trophies for online? I mean, that's why tournaments are exciting in my opinion because there is some uh, glory with winning the the trophy and uh, you know good memories we did like um, confidence boost you basically grind so long to this moment to to, to wait for, for this moment to happen and when it happened like getting a trophy is like really nice and uh, you don't have the same in cash games where you might score a really nice cash session and uh, win a lot of money but it feels like it's just like um, something which was about to happen anyway soon. With tournaments, winning this, for me, it means a lot, like the title. Yep, Jack King suited three, six off, and again, 
things tightening up. This is like this is literally going the distance. We got a heavyweight bout here. These guys both really playing tough and really close to call. Audience has a sweat, 50 or 100 for the giveaway. We have a dinner sweat. All you can ask for. Fours and seven. Hello. No, this is a spicy one house. This is mild spice. This could get get a little bit dicey. Vlad gonna want to kick this up. I would imagine it's a very wet board. Meet here. It seems like he's aware of what the f uh, heads up. I mean, it seems like he knows yeah, which folks are good for dong baiting. So. Yeah, this will also be uh, look as a perceived brick for seven ten, right? I'm not a spade doesn't put the four, the straight action in there. I mean, it's gonna be hard to just check fold here. I think he's gonna have to at least see one big bet though for Vlad and Ilya is gonna likely put some chips in. This will maybe slow it all down, but this is still gonna be a big pot uh, for I guess Vlad. I'm trying to think if there's any world where Ilya would turn his hand into a bluff, but I don't doesn't have a spade. And uh, yes, he, yeah. is kind of a, sa of a saver for Ilya. Yeah. All right, a lot and, of ones in the chat. Taking the chip lead again, back into a good situation. Uh, already zero, zero seconds on the clock. This is very intense. Even I'm getting tense watching this heads up. This guy wow. is so hard to Pretty fair situation here. Gut shot, the ace high, the over. Ace got the key club, but then king queen with two overs. Flush draw does hit the queen. And an yeah, important pot is Vlad was getting to pull away a little bit here. Is going to be able to, Ilya's going to win this hand. Yeah, it feels like Vlad can hero call here now in the ace because, I mean, there's a lot of tension involved also. He's got got not a lot of time to think about it. I think you're right. He's gonna at yeah, this point knocking okay, nice folks. Right. At this point it's very hard for three seconds to figure out all the blockers and all the good combos to call and fault and you just like take a intuitive decision. And uh yeah, we expect now the more experienced player to to have um, better under, better control. King Check nine Krishna, four, four eight. This is a bit 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 dicey here too, and and Ilya is going to step into it here at the wrong time, at the wrong time. It's interesting. I mean, I don't really understand his idea. But when when the dynamic is so aggressive, I mean, do all kind of stuff. And I mean, Vlad also has that key, the, the spade. I mean, his hand is super strong, obviously, on the turn, close to the nuts. Now, he, the spade does come in. He's going to bet. Ilya's getting a little sticky. Ilya's definitely getting a little bit perturbed by our friend here although this board is you know it's uh i don't know he doesn't have the best bluff catching cards either right he's got he's got a club he's got an eight for some of the missed stuff maybe that would be betting and bluffing so i don't know he doesn't have a spade don't get crazy my boy let's get the dinner <laughs> He's in the tank. This could be a 0-0 shot clock matchup. I don't think we've ever seen that. I mean, he's burning fuel here. He calls. Oh, he now Vlad is oh. in the driver's seat. And that's not just a river gone wrong. That was a in Barney Rubble trouble the entire time of that hand. He was drawing dead. And this is now a big advantage for Vlad. And it is looking grim. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pick the winner here now because... I just, just I don't want to announce it at the end. I think we actually did. We he might have left the chat, but at seven even one. I think he's not in the chat, but that is his username is Sunwaves. He will be getting a ticket of either fifty or a hundred dollars. That is your winner, as we see potentially a Vlad champion. He is going to go ahead and bet the king on the king ten seven jack ten and.
What do we got here? Almost 12 to 2 million. So it's like a 6 to 1 lead. Interesting to see if Philia will stay um, like emotionally calm after this big hit. It's very challenging. But you're still in it. You have 20 percent of the chips, a little bit less. But we have seen all kind of turnarounds. Especially in a match like this, and Grisham. Yep, Jack-8, Ace-5, Jack-8 in the lead. This is getting critical, the pots, and Ace-5. Going to check maybe a chance now. I mean, diamonds everywhere. Vlad has a small bit of the board, but it's enough if he's able to get to showdown, and he's going to come out and just blast it. Interesting. Interesting indeed, yeah. <clears throat> and what's taking total control over the match? Let's see if he can close it. Queen seven, um, good combo for check race, I believe, with uh, seven cards. He decides to call it. Don't hit. Both players really short on time now. Yeah, the time is really. really yeah, impressive really. how what uh, was able to keep uh, his composure and not uh, like all the hits he he got. Like he was the chip lead early in the heads up and. Uh, managed to stay calm and turn this around with the big hand um, oh this could be it ace mm. five ace nine vlad to hold and be your champion chops possible wheel possible now kind of a spicy flop can he hold it and be your champion vlad to the river Nine to seal the deal. Congrats. Well played. What a match. And that is your winner right there. Vlad Dari rocking the Austria flag. Looks like an official government official or, you know, using the emoji there. Just, just serious business today. Takes it down. I don't want to say a master class, but close to it. He seemed to bob and weave and duck and dive in the right spots. Just played well. Ran well for most of the time. He even took that sevens to fours. Huge moment where he lost a lot of his stack, took a rough beat, and did come back. So, Stoyan, what are your takeaways? What, what were your thoughts on this final table? Yeah, definitely a nice performance by Vlad and uh, very exciting to watch the style. Uh, it could go like anyway, the heads up. Like Ilya was also playing fantastic, very aggressive player. Um, but uh, I think in, in the heads up, like uh, Vlad showed um, more focus and uh, well deserved for him to win this. Yeah, uh, just amazing. Ilya, again, was your chip leader for the majority. Started out, really played well, got a second place. So he did his job, secured himself a nice payday. Didn't quite get the, the trophy, but he played phenomenal. And honestly, Stoyan, that was, a, that was a treat. We appreciate the time. Again, apologies for when you took down the GG Millions two weeks ago. Wasn't aware that was the same Stoyan who I, I did know in the back of my head. You won the 2020 WSOP main event, the largest Guinness World Record tournament for over, what, three million and change? Just that my name is too large and it cannot fit in the screen name, so it's just a mess. <laughs> but yes, that, that didn't help. That didn't help for me to know, but again, uh, uh, hey, listen, uh, you played great then. I gave you credit there and give you credit as always. And I've seen you have some great results live. So those can follow you on social media, Twitter in particular. Give them a follow. It's in my pinned tweet where you can also win a $50 giveaway. We appreciate it. We will see you all next week. Same time, same place, 145 Eastern. Biggest name in the game and a big guest as always with big prize money. We'll see you guys. Stoyan, thank you for your time. Thanks for the invitation. Good luck to everybody. And see you.